uh, a um, measure of effect size. How, how do you do that? In fact, uh, you have to do it a third time. In fact, I'd recommend that you not even bother doing the first way. Just always do it the, the second and third way. What you have to do is you go into General Linear Model, Univariate, you go into Quiz Marks, and then Formula Exposure, and then um, you could click your options if you want and get your, your uh, means uh, and estimate of effect size, but it won't actually do it from memory. Let's just check. You actually have to um, paste, you have to do a Actually, I'll do a contrast. I'll specify my contrast, polynomial, polynomial, just like I did in the original ANOVA. Now I'm doing it through GLM. Continue, paste. But I have to change something here in, in this part here. And this is all to get my estimate of effect size. So now I just need to change contrast to special. And I need to specify my coefficients just like I did in the other ANOVA. 3, 1, negative 1, negative 3. Those are the coefficients for a linear trend uh, in SPSS for means, uh, the, of which there are four, four means. So I'm going to run that, and SPSS is going to do another linear <laughs> contrast analysis, but it's actually going to give me what I want, which is the partial eta squared. So here's my contrast analysis, which gives me a, an f of, of 7.197 and a significance of 0.010. This is my con this is the um, uh, contrast analysis, just like I got here. 2.683 or 7.197. Those mean the same. If you square that value, 2.683, you get 7.197. And when I did it through GLM, I also get 7.197 for my linear contrast analysis, but I also get my partial eta squared, which is 0.141. So this means that 14% of the variability in scores is accounted for by a linear effect across the four levels, low to high exposure to formulas. So that's the full roundup of doing a um, uh, doing a linear contrast analysis is kind of clunky because SPSS gives us different pieces of information when you do it three different ways, but it's not really complicated, and you get and it's really powerful because if you know how to do this, then I really do believe that in some cases you'll be able to find statistically significant effects when you otherwise wouldn't. So you you have to do the um, linear contrast analysis the second way that I did it so that you can get the does not assume equal variances t value for the linear contrast analysis and then do it the third way so that you can get the partial eta squared. Uh, you could possibly calculate it uh, yourself if you use the sum of squares from the first one. Let me just check that that's going to be the case. Uh, so I'm going to divide the sum of squares 151.209 divided by the total sums of squares 1082.245 and that gives me 0.139 which is very close to the sums of square to the partial eta squared I got here so within rounding it's roughly the same getting them both way uh, if you calculated yourself through the sums of squares uh, or with the partial eta squared. Anyway, I would probably, uh, who knows which way you're going to do it, but it's just great to be able to do it at all in SPSS uh, and you have various options to do it whether you reject the, uh, the homogeneity variance assumption. Anyway, this video, like a lot of my videos, end up a lot longer than I thought because I cover more than I expect to um, and I probably say more things than I should, but I hope some of you find the extra analyses I do useful. Uh, I certainly find that interesting and uh, I hope you continue to watch uh, videos and get, and get benefits from it. Thanks for watching.